Hey everybody, my name is Joe Piverunas. I'm the founder and managing editor of Nanalyze. We're a boutique media and research firm covering disruptive tech stocks for a broad audience of retail and institutional investors across the globe. Today, we're gonna to talk about a company called Pacific Biosciences. So this is a follow on from a recent piece we did on long read sequencing stocks. And as promised, we're gonna take a closer look at Pacific Biosciences. The title of this presentation is Pacific Biosciences stock falls while revenue rises. So let's talk about the stock falling first. Now, back in February of last year, we published this piece with actually a rather comical intro that talks about how when you're a pundit and you make a correct call, not a single person will acknowledge you. But if you ever make a call and it's wrong, people crawl out of their graves to tell you what a moron you are. So it's always, um, great to take the opportunity and reflect on when you get it right and this piece that we published you can see here this was the chart of pacific biosciences stock price action around the time that we wrote this piece so you see that red line that crosses exactly where the price was when we published a piece that said why is pacific biosciences stock dropping well it actually wasn't dropping when we published that piece but we named it such because we believed that it would. And as you can see, since we published that piece, the stock price is down around 80%, which is not a bad thing. So the reason that we titled that, for some reason, this is rather interesting. Well, it's explained by loss aversion. People never ask Google why a stock is rising. They automatically assume they buy a stock and it should rise. But heaven forbid a stock price starts falling, they all turn to Google for trading advice. And you can see here, you can plug any stock into Google and put in why is Illumina stock, for example, you see falling, dropping, drop, drop today, et cetera. People worry a lot when stock prices go down. And in the case of bio nanogenomics, or sorry, Pacific Biosciences, but bio nanogenomics has been falling as well. But in the case of Pacific Biosciences, the fact that the stock price has been falling is actually a good thing. And that's counterintuitive to most people that see a stock price falling as a problem. Now, back when we wrote that article, shares of Pacific Biosciences were trading at about $45 a share and SoftBank invested a $900 million into Pacific Biosciences, similar to, um, I, we did a presentation today for our premium subscribers and looked at a company called Splunk and how a private equity firm had done a similar deal. And what, what they'll do is they'll loan money, right, to a firm, so SoftBank has loaned money to Pacific Biosciences and they'll say this, when it comes time for the notes to mature, and that's quite a while from now, you could see that's February, 2028, we have the option to take that redemption in shares at a conversion price of $43.50. Now, if by 2028, shares are trading at $100 a share, that's a great deal for SoftBank. They get the delta between $43.50 and $100 a share. So. As you can see, SoftBank is clearly very, very bullish on Pacific Biosciences. Now, it doesn't matter that the stock price has fallen, the deal still uh, holds, and then maybe by 2028, SoftBank will still expect shares to be high. So around that same time also, uh, uh, ARK Invest was quite bullish. You can see on the left-hand side here, that was their second biggest holding in their genomics ETF. Well. You fast forward to today, on the right-hand side, you can see a table here. I just pulled this. Uh, they're not in the top 10. They just eke out their uh, position 11, Pacific Biosciences. So the fact that the weighting has dropped probably has something to do with the fact that the company has dropped. Now, I wanted to go back again to talk about stocks that drop. Here's a genius comment by Jim Cramer a couple days ago about UiPath. He says, this is a great company and a bad stock. What can I say? We're not recommending stocks that have gigantic losses anymore. We just can't. Maybe one of the most asinine statements you've ever read. Now, let's give him the benefit of a doubt and assume that he's talking about gigantic losses 
by UiPath and their um, net income. Well, if you look at the firm, they have about $1.8 billion in cash. They're hardly having a problem at all managing their losses. This is epitomizes today's financial pundit that feels if they talk something good about a company that it has to only go up. When UiPath sinks, that's a great thing. If it's a great company, people should be stoked. He should be screaming on the rooftops to recommend this, but pundits these days expect that whenever they talk about a stock, it should go up. And that that's a problem with Main Street pundits today. So when we're looking at Pacific Biosciences dropping 80%, we want to ask ourselves, well, what's actually been happening with this firm? Well, they had a great 2021. You can see here the four bars in red. These are their last four quarters. Look at that breakout year for the firm. They, they hit $130 million in revenues. They started selling lots of machines. They have great consumables revenue. Great year for Pacific Biosciences not a great year for the stock price that's a good thing if you're an investor in the firm you can buy shares cheaper sure there may be some bag holders out there but a bag holder is it only meets that definition if the price of their shares goes to zero so if you're in the red on a pacific biosciences position you shouldn't worry much the company has never been healthier so when we look at revenues that are up. We take a look here, you could see a good chunk of the revenues are consumables. They launched a next generation of their system in October of 2020. And throughout 2021, they had 171 installs. They have a, have a total install base now of 370 or machines that are generating those consumables. Now, we looked through their recent 10K, rather difficult to find too much of value in there in terms of metrics. So we'd like to know how many customers, what types of customers, how many people are paying them money and in what tiers, right? The typical SaaS metrics, things like that. Um, didn't see, uh, and obviously this isn't a SaaS business, but um, you can still provide metrics that say how much money clients are paying you by tier. There wasn't a ton of information in their 10K, but from what we could see, it was rather promising. Now. You have really three firms to consider when it comes to the long read thesis. You have Illumina and they're doing short read and synthetic long read with the announcement of Infinity. You have Oxford Nanopore doing true long read. And then you have Pacific Biosciences that acquired a firm last year called Omniome. I believe that's how you say it. And that allows them to do true long read and short read with a higher degree of accuracy, they say, than Illumina. Now, when you look at the leadership profiles at Pacific Biosciences, six of the 10 top leadership profiles are ex-Illumina, and they've got a billion dollars. So they're more than capable of competing with Illumina now, and that's what they plan to do. When you look at simple valuation ratio, what we do is we take market capitalization divided by annualized revenues. You can see here that Illumina sits with a ratio of 12, Pacific Biosciences not so far behind, and then Oxford Nanopore is the richer of the three. And we use 2021 revenues because Oxford Nanopore is a foreign firm and they don't provide us with quarterly granularity. So when looking at the comparison of technologies, this becomes difficult, right? Because we don't know enough about what Illumina has announced their infinity. That's gonna be made available, I believe, in the second half of this year, and the experts can start kicking the tires. So until that happens, we don't really know much about this synthetic approach, which can be rolled out on their 20,000 machines that are out there, their, their large install base. Um, what Pacific Biosciences is making a point to drive home is how accurate their technology is and what a low error rate it has. And recently, the human genome was completely sequenced. Yep, we all thought it was that it already happened. Well, it wasn't properly completely sequenced, and that's happened. And in that article, it's um, from Engadget, and the research piece that we published that accompanies this video will be in the description and it's in inside there, the link to this article. They talk about how that happened and that both technologies were used, true long read, from Oxford Nanopore was used initially. And then they say 
the team used another technique called Pacific Bio Hi-Fi, which can sequence shorter sec sections with 99.9% .9 accuracy. So Pacific Biosciences makes it a point to differentiate their offering on accuracy and low error rate. So that's something to note. In terms of the long read story, Pacific Biosciences had a real breakout year in 2021. Shares have never been cheaper. That's a great thing. If you were going to make a long read bet today, you'd probably look at Pacific Biosciences just based on valuation and where the company sits today. Remains to be seen how Illumina's infinity is received. And some have said that, well, you know, it's not true long read sequencing. And what it comes down to is what use cases can whatever they've developed address? And that's what needs to be determined, right? Until if, if the technology they've developed can cover 80% of the use cases and bio nanogenomics can take the other 20%, then that's great for Illumina. It's great for both companies, right? Um, or sorry, Pacific Biosciences. I keep mixing up the two. Um, speaking of which, next up, we're going to talk about bio nanogenomics. So that's going to be the next article that we do on this. And um, I think that probably takes us to the end of this presentation. Uh, just want to thank everybody for taking the time to watch this. Please make sure to subscribe to our channel. Go ahead and put your questions and comments on the video. We'll respond to them there. And uh, thank you very much for your time.